welcome to the second of uh, three videos on the respiratory system. This particular video is going to look at the lower respiratory system. So everything right below the larynx, starting with the trachea and down into your lungs. So let's begin with basic lung anatomy. Um, there's, a whole lot, there's really not a whole lot to um, the anatomy and physiology of the respiratory system, the lower, or the lower respiratory system, until we get down to the nitty gritty, to the very bottom of the pathway. Um, so we'll start off with, with the very first one up here in the trachea, and that's letter B on this diagram. Trachea has all these cartilaginous rings to help keep it um, fully open at all times. You can feel those on yourself when you can feel your trachea through your um, your sternum, your, your neck, you can feel those rings. And from there, it's really just this, a series of tubes that get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so those tubes go as follows. E are the bronchi, and then there's a, a series of bronchioles, which just get smaller and smaller branches, um, like letter F. And then they blew up the bronchioles to get to the very most important part, which is G here, the alveoli these small balloon-like clusters. And each alveoli is surrounded by a net of capillaries. And you can kind of see that here, but I'm going to show you a better picture um, on there. But essentially, the, the role of all of these things are just to subdivide, subdivide the air into um, smaller and smaller channels so that we can maximize surface area in the alveoli for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's gas exchange. So let's take some time and actually look at gas exchange and what's happening here. So let me orient yourself to, let me orient you to a couple different diagrams. Here's a bronchiole. You can see the, the vast network of capillaries surrounding all the little clusters of alveoli. Um, and that same picture, kind of a, a top-down cross-section here, the alveoli is in the middle, alveolus, and then one in alveoli. And these are just different capillaries, and inside those capillaries are red blood cells. So you can see that net around each alveolus. Now inside the alveolus, so it doesn't collapse, is a chemical called surfactant. It just coats the lining of the alveolus so that it stays open. Now a side note with surfactant, um, it's a pretty cool chemical, but um, it's one of the last things to be developed in a newborn baby. Uh, just because you can imagine they don't need their lungs when they're inside the womb. So anyway, so oftentimes premature babies have a very difficult time breathing. They may have to be on a ventilator until their body starts to develop surfactant. Because their alveoli just can't stay open. They recoil. So maybe they may be diagnosed with infant respiratory distress syndrome um, for a temporary time in their life. Um, unlike uh, adult or acute respiratory distress syndrome, which can come at a later time for different reasons. But anyways, I, I want to get back to the, the topic of this slide, which is gas exchange. And the exchange that we're studying is something called external respiration. And basically, by definition, this is gas exchange between your alveoli and the, and the um, capillaries. Okay? And it's really easy. It, just relies on a simple rules of diffusion. So if we zoom in even farther into one capillary, um, you'll see that we obviously want to get oxygen into the blood and CO2 out. How do we do that? We inhale oxygen, so there's a very high concentration in the alveoli. And naturally, the oxygen, because these tissues are so thin, wants to go into the um, red blood cells in our capillaries, high to low concentration. The same with CO2. The red blood cells bring the CO2 um, where it's very highly concentrated and the CO2 naturally wants to diffuse where it's low concentration every single time. Now, there's more types of gas exchange happening in your body, but they all rely on concentration gradients. So this is a picture of internal respiration. And by definition, internal respiration is the exchange of gases between your blood and all of your body cells down here. The same thing holds true with oxygen coming from the left side of your heart, pumping all over the body. Oxygen
oxygen is really high in your blood, it wants to go into your body cells because there's not a lot of oxygen there. I don't know. The same with CO2. CO2 is produced via the Krebs uh, citric acid cycle by making ATP, and that wants to get out of your cells and into your blood high to low. So CO2 makes its way out, and then it goes back to the heart, goes to the lungs, and we exhale it. All right, I do want to give you some names of a couple intermediates in this process. Um, the first is a molecule called hemoglobin. We abbreviated HB. It's a special molecule that really is the one that's grabbing onto the oxygen or the CO2. So when it's carrying oxygen with it, um, we give it the name of oxyhemoglobin. On the other hand, when it's carrying CO2, it initially is called carbaminohemoglobin. However, what happens is once that CO2 gets situated in your blood, it gets converted or transported as this, as a bicarbonate ion. You can see it here, HCO3 minus. And this is a weak acid. So uh, this is kind of interesting. Say you hold your breath or all of a sudden you have trouble breathing or you stop breathing, that HCO3, that's going to build up. So your blood gets very acidic, and then that leads to a huge chain of reaction and, and um, side effects in your body. But to any effect, um, your breathing rates really are monitored by how much HCO3 is floating around your blood. And in turn, your brain can keep track of how fast you should inhale and exhale based on that amount. And it kind of keeps your blood pH in a very close checks and balance system. So that's internal respiration. All right, so we'll now we've been looking at the nitty gritty detail. Let's kind of back up to the big picture. Where are these lungs situated in your body? Well, they're situated in a lung cavity called the pleura. And it actually has two kind of layers, the outer layer here and then the visceral layer, which literally does line the lungs. And in between, we have a little fluid. Um, but say you have like a, you know, a bullet or a stab wound that ruptures that, that pleural lining, the pressure gradients that are so critical to breathing are disrupted. And this picture actually shows um, pneumothorax, which is a collapsed lung due to that outside puncture wound. All right, and just a really brief recap, uh, recap now on a couple of diseases. Um, we have bronchitis and asthma, which together, collectively, um, they kind of do very similar, they have some similar symptoms. First, And the first and foremost is that they produce excess mucus. You can see that from the picture. Um, for bronchitis, though, not only do we have that, but we have some inflammation of the bronchial tubes in the airway. So they narrow, and it's tough to breathe. For asthma, um, that's more, they do have excess mucus production, but the, the bronchioles and airways kind of spastically contract, and so you can't get a good airflow through the bronchioles and bronchi. And the third case I have up here is emphysema, and this is often seen in, in heavy smokers. And so what happens is you don't have excess mucus production, but the alveoli, those balloons that are supposed to fill up and then recoil as you exhale, what happens is they become really, really overstretched over time. So they can still fill up with air, but it's really hard to get that air back out again to recoil. So these folks have a really hard time exhaling. All right, so these all fall under the umbrella of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. It's something that's irreversible, so damage has been done, like emphysema, asthma, um, and it obstructs airflow, which all of them do. So that's just a COPD is umbrella for many, many respiratory disorders. Uh, a couple other ones, pneumonia. This is this could be bacterial or viral, where there's a fluid buildup in the lungs. Tuberculosis is a bacterial disease where these little granules called tubercles collect in the lungs. Um, this is a pretty tough disease to beat nowadays because it's so resistant to antibiotics. Um, you'll be on antibiotics if you have TB for many, many months. Um, the first few months you may be in quarantine. 
so that we may not spread it to anybody else. Um, and there's study from infant death syndrome. Um, the picture there shows that we should always put the babies, lay babies down on their backs rather than their tummies to keep from um, them uh, preventing them from doing that. And obviously there's, there's lung cancer where we can have a malignant tumor growing in the lungs. And the lungs are divided into different lobes. There's two lobes in the left lung and three in the right lung. So if you just get one lobe removed, we refer to it as a lobectomy, but sometimes you may have to get a whole lung removed, which is called a pneumonectomy. So that's all we're going to do today. Um, that's video two of three on the respiratory system. And in the meantime, thanks for listening.